Well, it's Monday. It's time to take a look at Arizona real estate numbers for the week. And I'm going to question some of them. I'm going to question some of the things I've seen because I'm a skeptic. And you don't get to see the behind the scenes things I do here. I film these by myself and I was, this is my second recording. And as I'm watching my camera, um, I started to question whether or not it was even on. I thought I saw the lens close and it did. My battery went dead. <laughs> It's kind of like talking to your wife, you're telling her a long story, and pretty soon you lean in and you go, are you even listening? So anyway, let's get on with the numbers for this week. Um, it's the same, same story, repeated often. We had 4,169 new listings. We sold 4,053, difference of about 116 homes, 8,153 on the market today. That'll go down by about two or 300 tomorrow because homes that got offers on Sunday have been reviewed Sunday night and Monday. The contracts get signed on Monday, and then the agent puts the updated information into the MLS tonight. Tomorrow morning, about 300 homes will be off the market. We'll be down to about oh, 7,800, 7,900 homes, active listings in Arizona. So where are we headed? Well, what am I skeptical about? You know, I got burned once in California. I bought a house for 212, sold it for 150, and moved to New York. I was never looking at data. I was just pulling out the real estate magazines. Oh, this is nice. I, I wasn't looking at economic data. I wasn't looking at trends. I wasn't looking at inventory. Right now, we are in a hectic buying market. Now, I'm not here to put a video out that says a crash is coming or that now's a good time to buy. These videos are to educate us on what we need to look at so we can see if we spot a trend. One trend is obvious, and we are in a hectic market a frenzied buyer's market. That always indicates the top of the market. Now, when it hits the top and it turns around, does it turn around and does it land softly? Does it level out for several years or does it crash? History shown us that crashes don't happen very often. The one in 2008 was the first one in my lifetime. So I know people think that there's another one that's right around the corner, but I don't know. But I know that hectic buying activity always signals the top of the market, and that's where you're at the top of the market. So if you're a buyer, keep that in mind. There couldn't be a clearer signal that now's a great time to sell. So and I understand there's a lot of reasons why people aren't willing to sell right now. But then I saw a chart this week, and it was titled More Depth Than Less Length. So what it was doing was it was showing unemployment number that was going down. You can see the chart here now. And then a survey by Wall Street Journal shows that within four years, we'll be right back to that same unemployment rate as we were before this whole mess started. And it compares it to other times like the Great Depression, et cetera. Now, that survey was conducted by people far smarter than me, but when I see that chart, I don't really take it as the gospel because I think there's other things out there that we need to look at. First of all, Yes, it is true that unemployment does not directly affect real estate prices, but prolonged unemployment will. If we're in a deflationary period where assets are going down and everything we buy is getting lower and lower and lower in price and rent is going down, that's deflationary. Now, there's an argument that says the Fed is pumping in so much money now that we're going to see inflation, but the Fed chairman has come out and said that all of his numbers that he sees are we are in deflationary times for the foreseeable future, despite the amount of money that he's putting out there. I'll show you a couple charts that, that help prove that point. So there's a survey that comes out from senior loan officers in the big banks about loan tightening. And this one shouldn't be a surprise to you. They said that, you know, they're tightening up like crazy on industrial loans, on commercial loans. That shouldn't surprise you. Everybody's working from home now, office buildings, strip malls, banks are nervous and skittish. They really don't want to lend to these guys, and they're going to make it harder and harder to get that kind of a loan. Great. What about residential mortgages? Well, if you look here, here's a survey of residential mortgages off to the right on that chart that I've circled that shows that the sentiment is that that's going to tighten up as well, just like it did in 2008. Maybe not to that degree, 
But this doesn't show the level of tightening. This chart shows how many people think it's going to tighten. And there's a lot of people that think it's going to tighten up and tighten up pretty quick. There are also people saying that interest rates are on their way up. Hurry up. You need to get out now. But let me explain to you what happened last week. They did go up last week, but they went up because one of the regulators decided that it was time to tack a fee on refinancing loans, not purchases, but refis. On a $300,000 home, that fee was $1,500 that they're charging the lenders. Now, every loan that the lender already had locked in, they, the lender, had to pay that fee because they already told you, here's your fees, I've got you locked in, and then they, Wednesday, come in with a new fee. They can't pass it on to the consumer. So, because it's gonna affect all loans that are going into effect on September 1st. So lenders had no choice. They were gonna, some of them was costing like $10 million. So they upped their rate to try and compensate temporarily for this huge slap in the face that they got from the Fed. Now the Fed came out and said they're doing this because they just see potential risk and uncertainty in this economic climate. Well, that risk was still there one to two months prior. The other odd thing is, is how much risk is in a refi versus a home purchase? Because if you're refining your house, they're checking your credit, they're giving you a new loan, they're lowering your payment. How does lowering your payment increase the risk of that loan? So this was nothing by a, but a money grab by the Fed, in my opinion, and many other people. So now there's something else to look at. And as long as we're talking about unemployment, in June, 18.7% of people that were unemployed have been unemployed by 15 weeks or longer. In July, that number jumped to 48.7%. It got worse, not better. That doesn't indicate that unemployment's gonna improve anytime soon, and that means more deflationary pressures, less spending. Here's an interesting chart. M2, money supply, how much money is in our system, in our banks, in the stock market, in our 401ks, there's a ton, there's a lot of money out there. Gonna break loose any day, right? Take a look at M2 velocity. It's not going anywhere, that money's out there and you guys are saving it, you're hanging on to it. Now you know why there's a coin shortage and a dollar shortage. Take off your tin hat, tin foil hat, it's not some conspiracy, we're just not spending our money. We don't wanna to touch the money, we don't want COVID, we're just leaving our coins at home. So we're not going out to eat, we're not going to the movies, so there's not a lot of movement of money. Now there are some people that are saying, economists that are saying that how will things loosen up? Well, there's a lot of forbearances out there and a lot of this money that's being saved may end up going towards people just catching up with their mortgages. That's not going to improve the economy or they're gonna be paying down more debt. So the money that's being saved is actually just kind of being hanging out there right now and they're gonna to have to start dipping into it for basic living expenses. So they're not expecting to see a huge explosion in velocity. Now the Fed chairman has also been jumping up and down and telling Congress that they need to do something. They need to give us some relief. They need to give us more stimulus. They need to continue the unemployment. They didn't, the negotiation didn't go well. Everybody went home, although I'm hearing they're back today, but they're talking about the frickin' post office instead of you and me, and the president ended up issuing some memorandums and an executive order on unemployment, $400 a week. Yeah, but the states still have to kick in 100 themselves. Some states are saying no, some states are saying okay, so it's really complicated. But there wasn't any stimulus that's inked to go out. So expect the feds to do a huge, and by huge, I mean unprecedented amount of quantitative easing unlike anything we've seen before real soon. That is going to put more downward pressure on interest rates and on mortgages. And let me show you another reason why. And this chart is called real estate loan growth. This is showing that rates are down at 3%. That's the red line. But the blue line above is leveled off. It should be going up. Take a look at 2016. See how the red line went down? See how the blue line went up? That's the way it's supposed to work. What's that telling you? Rates are not low enough to spur loan growth. But wait, Rick, everybody's out buying houses right now. We're setting records. Yeah, we are, but total loan growth on a 
macro scale across the United States is not going up. It's staying at a level amount. That doesn't give you any indication where real estate prices are headed because that's a supply versus demand equation. But it is saying that loan rates, borrowing rates, are gonna have to go down further if we expect that blue line to move higher. Smash the heck out of that like button. Thank mm -hmm. you.